Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, it's going to be quite a basic one and one which is specific to this example, but I'm going to be showing you how I've set up and how to do it just to teach you the basics and understandings of it, and that is going to be two person animations. So, in this example, what we've got is two people shaking hands. So, if I hit play, I'm going to walk up to my AI, press H for handshake, it's going to walk in front of me, and we're going to shake hands like so. So, he's gone into the correct position and rotation and we then shook hands so it is a two person animation with each AI playing or with each character or mesh whatever playing a separate animation merged together to look like one. I hope that makes sense and again this is what we're going over today just with this specific example but the basics of it to show you how to set up and how you can adapt it to your own code for your own specific animations. So without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously import your animations. Now this shaking hands one I've got off of Mixamo, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below. And what we're going to do first with this is right click onto it, create, and create an anim montage. And we can just give that the same name. We don't need to do anything else with this, we just need the animation montage. So it's going to automatically blend in and out of this animation for us. What we also want to do is enable the use of animation montages. So we want to open up our animation blueprint, which for me is content, mannequin, animations, third person and MVP. And you're going to want to make sure that you do this for all the animation blueprints you're using, for example one for your character, for your AI, basically any mesh or any character whatever that is going to be using these animation montages, make sure you do this step in all of their animation blueprints. For me the AI and character share the same one, so I can just do it in this blueprint here. We're going to drag out of our state machine in the anim graph and get a slot default slot. And again this just allows us to use animation montages. We can compile, save, simple as that, that's all we need to do. So we're going to close this here and open up our character blueprint to actually start doing this code. So for me there's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. Now the first thing I want to do here is go to my viewport and I want to add a component adding a skeletal mesh and I'm going to name this one to be animation reference. So this is going to be a position in the world where we want the AI to move to to perfectly play the animation where we want. So we can add a skeletal mesh, this one being whatever the AI mesh is, which for me is just the SK mannequin again there. And then I'm going to move this into the position which I want, so I'll move it here, rotate it in the correct position so it's facing the player, move it down obviously, and again you just put this into position where you want. So a good way to find out is to change the animation mode from use animation blueprint to use animation asset and the anim to play is going to be your animation which for me is shaking hands. And what we can do is untick playing and just set the initial position to what we want. So basically the furthest part they're going to be. So for me that'll be about 1.3 and I will do that for both of these as well. So untick playing 1.3 so we now see this is where we want them to be. So we can see that this needs to be moved back a little bit further and a bit more up. Now I do already have the location and rotation which I need, so I'm going to input that, but I just wanted to show you how to do it so you can do it yourself as well if you're doing different animations. So for me it was 150 on the X, minus 20 on the Y, and minus 100 on the Z. And that for me is going to be the good and perfect position which I need. Obviously this animation isn't too great, so it is a little bit off as you can see there. But this is as close as I can get it with this animation and again for the purpose of the tutorial I don't need to be too close because you can obviously change it massively based upon the animations which you're using. So we just need to make sure to put these both back to use animation blueprint so they are going to be doing the correct animations. So this is how far apart they're going to be. What I also want to do with this animation reference mannequin is make sure it is hidden in game. So take that and make sure it has no collision which it shouldn't by default and it doesn't there. So essentially the player is not going to see this or be able to collide with it, so as far as they are aware this does not exist, it's purely just here for us to use as a reference, as a position in the world for the AI to move to so we can play the correct animations. So we'll compile, save that and go over to the event graph now. Well the one more thing I forgot actually is we need to make sure we select the third person character self up in the top left up here, search the details on the right and search for tags and you'll notice I've already got it so I'll need to delete that and we're going to add a tag and give this whatever name you want. So I had mine as TPA, which was two person animations. So essentially what we're doing this for is you can only try and do a two person animation if the character you're doing it with is also a two person animation character. So I hope that makes sense. 
essentially you can't go up to a wall and try to shake its hand because obviously you can't do that with a wall. You can only shake hands with actors that are also compatible with two-person animations, which we're setting up via these tags here. So I hope that makes sense. I will compile and save that. Now we'll start doing some of the coding. So we're going to find some empty space, right click and get the event which you want. So for me, I'm going to do the H keyboard event for handshake, that makes sense for me. You can obviously do whatever you want, so you can maybe have this on a, on a radial wheel for example, or any button, and you can obviously do input actions as well if you wanted. But out of the event which you're using, we're going to get a sphere trace for objects, so this bottom one down here. The start is going to be get actor location, and that is also going to go into the end as well, so it's both the actor location. Then the radius, I'm going to set to 200. So essentially it's drawing a sphere on the player with a radius of 200, which you can obviously increase and decrease as well if you wanted, but this is the one which I'm going for. To test out how big you want it, you can draw debug type persistent, compile, and the error is just we haven't given object types, so we'll continue on with this first. Drag out the object types and we're going to make array, and we want to make sure we are looking for pawns, because again, we only want to interact with other characters, they are going to be pawns, so we'll give it a make array of pawn there. Now, if we minimize this and hit play, we can press H and you see this circle here is essentially how big the radius is. So if another AI or another character, another actor is within this circle, we can interact with it. So you can make this bigger or smaller if you wanted, or you can just do a line trace wherever the player's looking. It's really easy to customize for what you want, but this is how I want it and I want it this size as well. So you notice if I'm standing here, that has collided with that actor there, so they will be able to actually interact with us and have the two-person animation like so. So that's what I want. So I'm going to change this to be non once again. Then we want to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with the condition being the return value of that sphere trace for objects. So this return value here is if it did or didn't hit anything. So if it didn't hit anything, we obviously don't want to interact with it, so out of false, we're not going to do anything. Out of true, if it did, we want to see if we can interact with it. So we're going to come out of the out it and get a break hit result, open it up like so. Out of this, we're going to come out of hit actor and get an actor has tag. I'm going to close this hit result here. Now this tag, again, is going to be our TPA tag for two person animation, which we set up previously. And we're going to hold down B, left click to get another branch, connecting that into there like so. So it has to have hit something and it has to have the correct tag. If it has, perfect. We can now shake hands or do the two-person animation with this actor. So we'll come out of hit actor again and cast to character. Now just make sure this is to character, not a specific one, because character will just be the general character actor. So we'll do that like so, and I'm gonna double click this just to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. Then after this, we want to get an AI move to not move to location actor, we want AI move to this one here, with the pawn being the as character from the cast to character. So this will change depending on whichever actor we are interacting with. The destination wants to be our animation reference point, which is again why we created it earlier. So we're going to drag in our animation reference, out of this get the world location. Not relative, but world location. Because we want the AI or the actor the character to move to the position where this is, because we know that's the correct distance from the player. I'm going to move that back a bit. Then on success of this, so once the AI has moved to the correct position, we want to make sure they are rotating and facing the correct way. So we're going to get the animation reference, drag out this, get world rotation, and then make sure we also set the actor rotation out of as character from the cast character here. So set actor rotation, with that being the new rotation there, again on success of the AI move to. And once we've done this, the AI is in the correct position and rotation, we just want to now play the animations. So we're going to play anim montage as we mentioned earlier. With the first one, the target is going to be as character from the cast character, so it's playing it for the AI, anim montage being our shaking hands montage, or whatever it is for you. And then out of this, another play anim montage like so, with this one the target just being self, so is the player, and then montage again being whatever you want it to be. We will compile and save that. This is now the code completely done for us. What we're doing is when we press a button, we're going to see if there is an actor nearby. If it is, we want to make sure we can interact with it, and if we can, we want to move it into the correct position, in the correct rotation, 
and then play the animations for the AI and for us. So we're going to close that once again that's all we need to do. One final step however is we want to make sure this AI can actually move so what we want to do is put in a nav mesh bounds. So if we go to volumes and then get a nav mesh bounds we can just drag this into the level and scale this up to be the size we want. So make sure this just covers wherever the AI is going to be and then if you press P you should see the floor should turn green. If the floor is not green then it hasn't worked, it's not big enough or it's not touching the floor. If it is green, perfect, the AI now can move in that area, which again is perfect for what we want because we want the AI to move into the correct position. Also, what else we want to do is make sure this AI is interactable. So we can open up our AI blueprint, which we have. If you don't already have one, don't worry. You can right click your character and duplicate it and then just delete all the code which you have in there. So if I open up mine, you can see there is absolutely nothing in here because I don't need anything. So all we're going to do in here is search for tags on the AI self once again, add a tag, adding this one as TPA, making sure it's spelt the exact same way, also case sensitive. So again, two person animations, so this is actually compatible with two person animations. We'll compile, save, minimize that. Now we can hit play to test this out. So I'm going to go up to my AI over here, press H, they've moved into position and they've not actually faced the correct direction we see everything else works so they moved into position and played the animation so let's have a look at why that didn't work we'll open up our character once again it is going to the get world rotation we'll go into the viewport you can see this here so sometimes what actually happens is these references are facing different directions for some reason so you'll notice the x is that way on here but the x is this way here so we just want to make sure these line up perfectly so if we rotate it like that these are now facing the same direction so that should work again not sure why it does that sometimes a little bit annoying but that's a very easy fix for us to do so it looks like it should be wrong but it will actually be correct although it's actually not I moved it a little bit too far if we move it there now it should be correct again they're not lined up it's just trial and error sometimes so we'll have a look now looks like it should be wrong however it is correct moved into the correct position and the correct rotation and they have shook hands like so and now we can continue going about our business. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have two person animations working. We can go up to an AI, press a button, they're going to walk into the correct position, rotate the correct way as well and then play our animations so it looks perfect. Again let me just do this here, let's go a bit further away like this, they'll walk around and there we go, we're now playing the animation. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.